What is going on everyone? I hope you are doing well. On this channel, we focus on relocating. At least that was the original idea for this channel. To give you information about places you might want to or might not want to move to. And make it a little entertaining. If relocating's why you're here, you probably already know that relocating can be expensive. U-Haul or movers will set you back. If you're renting that deposit and maybe the first month's rent, that's a little rough on people. Going a couple extra weeks between paychecks while you get settled can be harsh to people living paycheck to paycheck. In a nutshell, the cost of living is what stops a lot of people from relocating. The good news is there are places in the United States that will pay you to move to their town, city, or state. Some are in the form of reimbursement for moving expenses. Some pay student loans off. Some give you a tax exemption. And there's a lot of other ways they get you that money back for relocating. So if you're itching for a fresh start and some new friends, I give you... Number 10, Kansas. If you watched my last video about places that'll give you free land, you might remember Kansas had a couple of towns on that list. Truth be told, there were more than I listed. I just didn't want the whole list to be about Kansas. I can make an entire video on Kansas towns alone, maybe even two. But this may be the best place to live on the cheap in the United States if you can handle the boredom. Make rural Kansas your new home is the slogan for the Kansas Department of Commerce's Rural Opportunity Zone, or RAWS program. Roz, I don't know if it's Roz or they call it ROZ, but anyway, it's the Roz program. They claim to offer a higher quality of life. Okay, maybe, but they will help repay student loans and Kansas has a lower cost of living. Those are both good. If you want to live on a budget, this is the place to go. The Roz program includes 77 rural Kansas counties authorized to offer one or both of the following incentives to new full-time Kansas residents. Up to $15,000 in student loan repayment over five years. That's a good chunk of change. State income tax waiver for up to five years. Again, that could save you a good amount of money. Applicants for student loan repayment must have an associate's or bachelor's or graduate degree, one of the three, and have taken up residence in the Ross counties after 2011. I'll have some links down below. Now, this may be a deal breaker for most college kids. Weed is still illegal in Kansas, and they don't play that medical weed is okay thing. And before you leave comments three years after the upload, the law may have changed by the time you got to this video. Stop typing. I'm talking to you, college graduates in 2025. Number nine, St. Clair County, Michigan. The Come Home Award Fund is technically a scholarship program, but instead of getting the cash up front, you get it when you graduate. The money is paid on the back end to lure young graduates to Michigan's St. Clair County. Some young go-getters fresh out of the university get up to $15,000 paid quarterly to use to repay their student loan debt. Recipients must get a job or start a business in the St. Clair area within 120 days of receiving the funds. The St. Clair County is just north of Detroit, so it's not like you're in Kansas out in the middle of the sticks with nothing to do. Sure, you're taking your life into your own hands being that close to Detroit, but the good news is you're right across the river from Canada and you can get your meds on the cheap for your Detroit-induced PTSD. The money is available to graduates of the STEAM program, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, Math. Anyway, you got to get a two or four year or graduate degree within the past 10 years. You got to have student debt and currently live outside the area. So basically, if you graduate with a degree in sports and leisure from Long Beach State in California, you ain't getting the cash. Number eight, Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Tulsa Remote Program pays people $10,000 to move to Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you've ever been to Tulsa, you might think that's a little light if they're trying to attract people. In addition, you get three months of discounted rent in a furnished apartment and a schedule of community events and programs. Tulsa Remote is funded by the George Kaiser Family Foundation. He's a really rich dude. He wants to, you know, help people out. The 3.5 million charitable endowment focuses on calling attention to the poverty in Tulsa and attracting new people to the city. They sort of need people to move to Tulsa. The state of Oklahoma is growing in population and Tulsa's sort of not. They've been kind of flatlined for uh, about two decades now. They're same population. Not much change. Number seven, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Between its citywide gigabyte network, which by the way was amazing for this part of the country when it was unveiled in 2010, and its booming tech industry, Chattanooga has the nickname of Gig City. If you don't know, Chattanooga is one of the fastest growing tech cities in the country. It's also a great place for moonshine. Thought you should know that. In case you land in Chattanooga and are itching to do some damage to your taste buds, liver, and reputation. I don't know what it is, but it seems like everyone that tries moonshine for the first time, they go a little overboard and it ends up badly for them. I don't know what that's all about. 
about. Anyway, through a program called Geek Move, yeah, Geek Move, I'm not kidding, the Tennessee metro area incentivized computer developers to move south with $1,250 for relocation costs and a $10,000 forgivable mortgage. And considering you can get a decent home in Chattanooga for under $250,000, that's not bad money. She's got to be a geek, I guess. Number six, North Platte, Nebraska. The North Platte Worker Enticement Program, WorkNP.com, that's where you can find it, offers local companies up to 5,000 in matching funds to create, as they call it, a robust, attractive worker incentive package to help fill full-time jobs that pay at least $20 an hour within the next three years. You know, I'm always suspicious when someone uses the word robust. I feel like they're trying to sell me something that sucks, that I don't want, like a, a, a short sleeve business a suit or something like that. The money is for relocation expenses, down payments on equipment purchases, and student loan repayments. The aim is to bring new highly skilled workers to the community and retain local high school and college graduates. Now the cool thing is North Platte is not one of the biggest cities in Nebraska, not like Nebraska really has big cities, but it is growing and it's a good size right now. It's a decent place to live. It's just kind of out in the sticks. That's their only problem. It's kind of way away from everything, but it's a city that's growing. So sometime soon it'll be the place to be I imagine in Nebraska Number five, Harmony, Minnesota. Harmony, Minnesota is about two and a half hours from Minneapolis and is enticing potential residents with a residential home construction rebate. Both spec, custom, and model homes qualify with zero restrictions on residency, age, or income. Okay, so no age or income restrictions? That seems sort of irresponsible. Are these people hooking up unemployed 12-year-olds with new homes? I gotta get to the bottom of this. Anyway, rebate amounts are calculated based on the home's final estimated market value. For example, a home valued in the 125 to 150,000 range would receive a $5,000 rebate. On the upper end of things, a home worth 250,000 would qualify for about 12,000. So, yeah, it's not very expensive to live here. That goes a long way, especially if you're a 12-year-old. I mean, what are your expenses? Computer games, internet, Mountain Dew, Code Red and Cheetos? I mean, come on. Number four, Vermont. Vermont has started a program throughout the entire state called Think Vermont, which is much better than the program they got going on in New Jersey, which is called Try Not to Think About New Jersey, You'll Just Be Upset. Anyway, the plan in Vermont is designed to entice remote workers to relocate, meaning people like myself that just need a computer to work with. Actually, I, I also need great deals on airfare, but most of my work can be done on a computer anywhere. Anyway, the remote worker grant is for any worker who can work from home. Applicants are eligible to receive up to $5,000 for up to two years. They have other programs that help you with relocation costs. It's a sweet deal because Vermont is not a bad state. It's really nice. They want to create opportunities for workers to create a life in this, the Green Mountain State. That's what it's called, the Green Mountain State. It's a nice place. Number three, Alaska. In 1976, Alaska started paying its residents to live there via the permanent fund dividend. The payouts are funded by Alaska's oil royalties and are divided evenly among the citizens. Yearly payouts may vary, but in 2018, it was $1,600. That's not bad money for just waking up in Alaska. To be eligible for the rebate, you must not claim residency in any other state or country, so no cheating on Alaska. This isn't some sort of open relationship with the state. They go a step further if you want to go further. The state's remote worker grant program will pay you qualifying remote workers expenses up to $10,000, $5,000 per year for two years, basically. And in 2020, they're going to be expanding the program. This is a great deal if you like being away from things like lawyers, bail bondsmen, sunscreen, ex-spouses, and people in general. Number two, Grant County, Indiana. Grant County offers the Grant for Grads program. This is to help employers trick, I, I mean convince, their workers or potential workers to live in the county. There are two separate programs here, one for renters and one for home buyers. A renter will receive 20% off their monthly rent payment with a max of $2,500 a year. Grant County isn't a bad place to live. It's north of Indianapolis and the biggest town here is Marion, which is home to IWU. I actually did a comedy show there and met a guy named Billy who couldn't stop referring to women as MILFs down at the Marion Splash House. I guess it's this little water park Marion has. It was probably the most uncomfortable conversation I've had in 
forever. He was kind of a creep. Rough 30 minutes I sat there talking to him. I finally actually had to just stand up mid-sentence and walk away from him. He didn't say a word. I think he knew he was irritating. Anyway, moving on. If you plan on buying a home here, they can help with that as well. They'll give you $5,000 for your down payment and closing costs, so that's nice. These homes could be anywhere in Grant County. There's only one requirement. It's got to be a safe and decent home, so no living in a van down by the river, which, by the way, Marion has a nice river going through. It's really nice. There are plenty of activities here and events keep you occupied. Grant County is not a bad place to live. This is a nice deal. And number one, Baltimore, Maryland. Normally I wouldn't suggest this, but it might be workable for some people. First things first, Baltimore is dangerous in a lot of places. If you look into one of these programs, it is not worth it if your only options are to moving into one of the more dangerous places. Telling you to move to Baltimore is akin to me telling you to ride a motorcycle really fast without a helmet. Both have the potential of ending very poorly. Of course, I do suggest both of those activities to my cousin's ex-wife. <laughs> Baltimore, Maryland has two programs to entice individuals to move to their city as they try and transform into the beautiful city that it once was. It was beautiful and it has a lot of wonderful history. Their Buying Into Baltimore program gives individuals who attend a trolley event the chance to win $5,000 towards buying a home in the city. They also have a Vacant Value Booster program which gives buyers of previously vacant homes up to $10,000 towards closing costs on the house. These programs are set up to kind of just get people back in in the neighborhoods. They've got far too many vacant properties. It's just bad. That just brings in more crime. And yeah, they just want to turn it back into a wonderful town. So Baltimore's kind of bending over backwards for people. Now, the cool thing is a lot of people work in Baltimore. A lot of people work in Washington, D.C. and commute. So this is why I say this might be workable for some people. Just make sure you're not moving into one of those really nasty areas. Again, unless you're my cousin's ex-wife. <laughs> All right, so that is my top 10 places that'll pay you to move there. I hope you guys got some information out of it. I hope this works out. It's good to move someplace. And if someone's going to help you do it, why not? Good plan. Anyway, thanks for watching my videos, guys. Don't forget all the links below. Give this video a big thumbs up. Tell me what you thought about the video in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Everybody have a great day. Be nice to each other.